And welcome to today's show. This is your host, B. Alan Bourgeois. I have with me Renee Sewers. Pronounce the last name Sewers or Sowers? Sires? No, it's like the C, Sewers. Sewers, okay. Um, which is appropriate because you've written books about sailing in the sea. So, Sewers. Um, welcome. Well, thank you. Glad you're here. So um, let's start with the original children's books that you've done, which are all, all about sailing. Um, what got you into doing the sailing books and, and how many total do you have? Well, um, I got into writing of the children's book, Nighty Night Sailboat. I have a series of 10 and one night I dreamed about it and I got up at 3 a.m. and drew a picture of Nighty Night Sailboat. And here's, here's Nighty Night Sailboat. And these are our adventures while we were cruising on our sailboat. So each one is individual and each sailboat has a unique flag. If I write about uh, pirates, we have a pirate's flag. I wrote about Key West. I have the Key West flag and the Bahamas. I have the Bahamas flag. So, and Noche Noche Valero is a book that I turned into Spanish and English and it's the original 99 sailboat. So these are our adventures. And the main reason I wanted to do these books is because of, I wanted to educate children about sailing and what fun it is. And, and you've actually done a lot of sailing yourself and that's the reason why it's so much fun because you do enjoy doing it. How, long, how many years have you been sailing? Uh, lots of years, I'll be telling my age. I guess <laughs> <laughs> I've been sailing for um, probably um well seriously sailing for about 25 or 30 years uh i bought my own boat uh 20 years ago the ladult sabita a 37 Irwin, and i could single hand the 37 Irwin. now uh, what you're saying um a sailboat okay so is that the size the foot on um, the footage will help us us understand it's a 37 foot sailboat. Okay. So it was a, it was a uh, coastal cruiser and I loved it. And it had a uh, short draft, four and a half feet. So you could go anywhere in the Galveston Bay on that boat. So if you read my first 99 sailboat, it tells you about the, uh, the galley, which is the kitchen, the, uh, uh, it tells you about the head, which is the bathroom, and all the different parts of the boat. The master, which is your bedroom. So it, it, it tells you the starboard and, and port side, which is the left side, starboard's the right side, and the bow's the front of the boat, and the stern is the back of the boat. So uh, not only children get educated, but sometimes the parents do who don't know about sailing. Now, you have a collection of other books, too, um, and your newest one is sitting in front of you called Moving On. So tell us about that one. Um, Moving On is a self-help book. It is a nonfiction book. While I was cruising around from port to port or place to place, as you put it, I interviewed 26 women, A through Z, when they decided to move on from bad relationships. This was a very eye opener for me and for other people to read. Uh, I just gave it to one of my friends last night who, who was going through a difficult time. And I said, you need to read this book to hear what other women have gone through. Or even teenagers need to read this book and what to not to look for in a partner, whether it's female or male. 
It doesn't have any gender references, except I did use women because that's who I interviewed, but it could have been men speaking about what has happened to them. So uh, I'm an illustrator, so I drew the, uh, the cover of this, and it is a woman kicking a man off the cake. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it meant to help just the emotional aspect of going through it, or is it um, guide as to step by step of how to deal with it? Help me understand a little more. These are these are 26 women of what actually happened to them. And I use, uh, I use a connection through a lady named Julia. And Julia meets these ladies at different places. She could meet them at grocery store or sailing or on the dock or any place or in an art museum. Uh, and she starts a conversation and then these people tell her about what has happened to them and why uh, they had to move on. Okay. And, and so, whoops, our commercial wants to play. Um, so it's really more of a comfort aspect and, and just the steps that or how they dealt with their breakup and how they moved on and stuff like that. So you have a wide variety of, of ways it happened as well as how they did it then, correct? Absolutely. And uh, uh, this psychologist or psychiatrist, I think it was, uh, wrote, on, uh, wrote a review on this book and I had, I had met her at a restaurant and she ordered the book online, she read the book, and then she told me that she wanted that everybody in her group that she has, she wanted them to uh, read this book because of the significance of what to look for uh, in a bad relationship. You may think it's normal. Uh, some people think it's normal uh, to have these things, especially teenagers, whether it's abuse or whether it's verbal abuse or physical abuse or people hiding things from you, uh, relationship uh, destruction. And in reading it, it gives you a clue. If you see any of these red flags, as you could call it, then you need to question the relationship and not take it any further. So you have 26 stories. Um, are these stories for um, a short relationship to a very long relationship and everything in between? Yes. Most of them are pretty long relationships, but that's one of the things I wanted to show, especially young people, that they do not have to wait that many years if they see these red flags that they can get out of a relationship if they see something in this book. This was a very emotional uh, time for me to write this book and listen to people. I had, I had women talk to me for 20, well, six, six hours, eight hours, um, and then called me the next day and asked me to talk some more. So it was a healing for them, um, but I was taking along of some of the emotions and then I knew this was a book that had to be written. Great, now your background, which we'll get into in the second session, um, is really not in this type of field. Um, you worked for NASA for a long period of time. Um, so, I assume NASA was what gave you the gift and the ability to do the sailing, is that correct? Not the skills, but the desire. To do the sailing? Uh-huh. No, I've always loved the water. Okay, so that, that's long from being a kid all the way up and stuff. All the way up, and I always loved the aerospace industry. I was just fortunate enough to uh, get a job with a, actually a subcontractor, United Space Alliance. And I did the final uh, flight audits, this 
I did six of them for NASA's sign off. And so for us who are not familiar with that, what does that mean? That means that NASA would say uh, that it's okay to fly the shuttle. It was signed off that they could fly the shuttle at that time. So I handed in my six audits quality, reviewed them and signed off a, a letter saying that it was okay to fly the space shuttle. How many years have you been doing that? or had done that? Um, I started uh, doing that probably in 1990. Uh, I did that and uh, I developed one flight audit. Actually, I came here to work Space Station Freedom as their software product assurance engineer. And then they gave the program, they did away with that program. And then I was hired by Flight Software to be their software quality assurance engineer. And, and I started out with one flight audit and it grew to six as our organization grew to over 650 people. So I was auditing uh, 650 people or processes in that. It was, that must have been a challenge. It, it made a challenge you had to work smarter. <laughs> You couldn't work harder. You just had to work smarter. And I ended up uh, doing a lot of, and I'm probably boring people, uh, a lot of metrics. So it would tell me what was wrong or right. Cool. Well, it's time for us to take our first break for our sponsors. So we're going to do that and then we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Okay. Thank you. What would you do if you found out everyone on the town council were thieves and murderers? That's what happened in Bandera, Texas in 1873. John Cruder was a marshal, yet he needed to operate outside the law in order to balance the scales of justice. He is the Midnight Marauder. You can find his books on Amazon.com and TopWesterns.com in paperback, digital, and audio. I'm Roy Clinton, and I hope you'll read The Midnight Marauder. Love to read? Love to meet authors in person? Then check out bookfestival.network to find a book festival in your region of Texas. We are adding book festival events throughout the year, so sign up to get notices and even a coupon towards purchase of a Texas author's book. Sign up at bookfestival.network. Best of Eve, Recipes from Around the World. This was written by Eve who was born in Holland and lived in South Africa and eventually came to Texas. This is no ordinary recipe book. This has herbs and spices and liqueurs and has a short story about Eve. The Best of Eve can be purchased on Amazon and it is written by Helen Monday. I am Grace Allison Blair, an award-winning author, motivational speaker, and modern mystic. I have combined spiritual and psychological principles in my nonfiction self-help books under Grace Allison and fiction books under Grace Blair. Go to modernmysticmedia.com to find Do You Have a Dream? Five Keys to Realize Your Dream and my novel Einstein's Compass, a YA time traveler adventure. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is B. Allen Bourgeois. I am your host for today's show. This is Renee, who has written several books, um, several children's books about sailing and then a nonfiction book called Moving On to help people who are going through the different types of relationships and separation or choosing to separate and talk to a lot of women about that. But you also have some other books that I wanted to touch um, base on. Um, can you tell me what they are about? Uh, I have written a, a trilogy of aerospace book. The first one I wrote is Aerospace, The Last Payload. And I got the idea 
to write this book from going down to Port Canaveral, Cape Canaveral, uh, I had to do a audit down there for ground operations. And John Glenn was flying on STS-95, the space shuttle. And I had a friend, Dennis Morrison, Dennis Morrison, who showed me his experiment. And when he showed me this experiment, I decided I would write a book about it. And I used the aging astronaut as a hero. And basically, this story took in his uh, experiment that John Glenn did on the space shuttle. And it's a cancer experiment that is still being performed on the International Space Station and at MD Anderson. And it's uh, a cancer experiment. So I took this cancer experiment and made it into something science fiction, that uh, mystery, suspense, murder, um, just really exciting um, chapters that moves very fast into the book. So that's called Aerospace, The Last Payload. Well, the sequel is called Aerospace, The King's Payload. And it continues on with the experiment, the cancer experiment, that does much more, of course, than just the normal cancer experiment. And I came up uh, with, with Dalton, who is the hero in the book, and Susan, who is the heroine. They continue on from the first story that comes, they become uh, involved in a relationship and the king has cancer, prostate cancer, and he goes into space, and so does Dalton go into space. So Susan gets to handle the whole project. And again, there's murder in this book, mystery, suspense, and it tells you a lot about NASA's culture, all these books do, and what to look for. A lot of secrets that most people would never know if they weren't involved with NASA. And the third book uh, that I just published is very exciting for me. It is actually Susan and Dalton, NASA asked them to have a baby in space. So it's about conceiving and delivering a baby in space. And in doing this, the reason for an, a meteorite is supposed to hit the Earth and do a lot of damage. So they want to ensure that children, babies can be born in space. So then I have to come up with a lot of, a lot of inventions. And this is really a uh, futuristic science fiction inventions to keep uh, Susan and Dalton and everybody in space safe from the uh, radiation because in space, it's a harsh environment. I can imagine. Now, you mentioned the cancer study is still going on for MD Anderson. Um, mm -hmm. I assume this is one to find out how cancer works or is it to help cure cancer? It's to help cure cancer. Basically, if you want to know the details, uh, they, they make, uh, they make this, they're being able to do it on Earth now, but they used to make the, the little capsules in space and gravity so that they would be completely circular without any gravity pulling them down. So you're in zero gravity or, or anti-gravity or whatever you want to call it. And, and then they're really microscopic. It's called the MEDS experiment and you insert it into an artery that goes to the tumor and encapsulates the cancerous tumor. So what they're doing now is they're doing it on breast research and cancer for breast research. Great. And then you mentioned the fact of having a child in space, and there is actual talk going around um, 
on different news systems about that. So how far along is the reality of that possibly happening? Well, well, it, I don't know. Um, they have to uh, find people who would want to do that. And, you know, uh, what I know about the radiation and the astronauts today, some of the astronauts have gotten cancer in space, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, a lot of things that's not really publicized. So you think about a small body <clears throat> in space, what would happen? Would it, would it change the way we look because we don't have the gravity pulling us down? Would you not be able to use your, your legs? I mean, you, Kelly, when he was in space, he, um, he had to exercise every single day just to keep his muscles in tune or else he would lose his muscles. So what would that do to a baby? Would the brain get damaged with the radiation? Would that be a problem? Uh, it's, um, it's a lot to think about. So in the book, uh, it was overwhelming to me because when I started thinking about it and I had to do a lot of research um, that, you know, on earth, which is natural to have a baby, but in space, it's a lot different. And then you have to think about the environment you're in. If you get any type of fluid in the, in the air conditioner or the oxygen or the vents or whatever, then you have to be really, really careful of what goes into space. That's why you see the astronaut eating out of like the little syrupy stuff because they can't get the water or anything into the atmosphere and in the space station. So it's real complicated. And I think it sounds like it. <laughs> if they do it anytime soon, um, they're going to have to have, uh, you know, have someone like Dalton and Susan go up and be a, a test person. And how long are they going to let them stay there? I mean, you, you conceiving a baby in space is your muscles work the same way as they do in on earth. So I don't see a problem in conceiving the child, but uh, what will happen to that child? And in my book, I came up with inventions to protect the child from the radiation, to protect the mother and also the other crew members with, with uh, different applications. You'll have to read the book to find out. You most definitely, yes. <laughs> you know, maybe some, you might spark somebody's imagination and make something actually happen too. So you never know. Um, of these books that you have, um, look at this is my cover. Uh huh. This is actually all my covers are the same, uh, basically the same design. And this is a picture that I took at one of the uh, space shuttle flights launches. So. It's, it's kind of neat that I took my own, you know, took my own picture, but this is the one about the rebirth. Now, is it just strictly a trilogy or do you plan on writing more books in that line? Well, when I wrote this book, I had another ending, but um, the people I got to read it to tell me if it was okay or not said, you can't have that ending. So I left it open that more could come. Okay. And what about um, the other book, your self-help book? Um, do you plan on doing a secondary book for that one too? Um, absolutely not. No. I, I do not want to do a secondary book for this. That, this was a um, very emotional book. And I'll leave that to my experts, the psychologist and the psychiatrist to deal with. All right. Well, we're going to step away for our um, next commercial break, and then we'll be right back and wrap up the show. Okay, thank you.
What started as a love letter to her son has become an international love letter for all parents to their children. Now you can read acclaimed author Shanna Lee Charbonneau's story to your children. When her son was very sick, she calmed him by singing her own song to him. She turned that song into the book, My Mama Loves Me, I'm Her Little Boy. She wrote three more magical books for all parents and kids six and under. Available at Indie Lector, Amazon, and all local and national outlets. Indie Lector is a store for serious readers and indie authors. Find great talent at IndieLector.store and save money on books with their book club. A portion of the proceeds helps get books into schools and libraries in need. Find a great book to read by an indie author at IndieLector.store. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us. Follow us or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is Beyond Bourgeois, and we are wrapping up our show. We have Renee Sewers with us, uh, who has written a lot of books. Renee, let's start with how can people find your books? Oh, you can find them uh, on Amazon. And, of course, they're at Walmart or Barnes and Noble, Target, online, and you can look online and you can put my name in, which a lot of people don't know how to spell, or you can just put 99 Sailboat in and it will bring up all my books. Okay. And, and do you have Facebook or um, Twitter or any of those accounts that people can reach out to you? Yes, uh, you can uh, find me on my blog spot, which is www sellladybooks.blogspot.com and also on Facebook I have Sell Lady Books and Art. And just so everybody remembers it is sale as in saline s-i-a-s-a-i-l um, not s-e-l-l so s-a-i-l ladybooks.com correct? Um, well it's s-a-i-l-a-d-y Sell Lady so lady books correct okay because i also do my illustrations and i do um i do oil paintings and uh and all all different types of mediums well great well we thank you very much for being with us and we appreciate your time and we look forward to talking to you in a few months who knows, maybe you'll have another book ready to go or just something new, exciting going on. Thank you very much for being with us. Oh, thank you, Alan, for having me. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website at IndieBeacon.com.